the type of formation underground will determine the way in which a well is constructed. In unconsolidated formations, now unconsolidated formations uh, have individual grains within them. For example, the formation is made up of sand and gravel. You're going to construct the well differently than if you're drilling into a consolidated formation. Now, coarse formations allow higher rates of groundwater flow uh, because of the, the more coarse the formation is. For example, gravel will allow more water to flow through it than a fine sand will. Now, in consolidated formations, what we're talking about are rock formations, uh, such as limestone or volcanic rock, and the well is drilled into that and the water flows through fractures in the rock. Now, consolidated formations are vulnerable to microbiological contamination because there's not the filtering effect that the sand will have in an unconsolidated formation. Well, let's look at the different ways of constructing these wells. First, uh, drilled wells are the most common type of well installed for public water systems. And they range in diameter and depth. The diameters uh, can be up to four feet, with depths ranging from 50 feet to several thousand feet. The well is drilled and the casing is installed to the bottom of the sand layer. The well screen is then lowered into the casing and the casing is then pulled up to expose the well screen. And the well is disinfected with a chlorine dose of 50 milligrams per liter and then flushed. Okay, so here we have uh, the well being drilled and the casing being lowered. Then the screen is lowered into the casing. And now the, the casing is going to be pulled up to expose the well screen and the aquifer is within that sand and gravel stratum. Well, how does it look when we're drilling into consolidated rock? Well, the well is drilled through the unconsolidated rock into the consolidated rock. And then fractures in the rock allow water to feed the well. Casing is uh, placed down and seated on top of the rock layer. The hole in the rock is left open. The well is then disinfected with a chlorine dose of 50 milligrams per liter and flushed. And the last type we'll look at is drilling a well into sand. A large diameter construction casing is installed into the sand. And the casing and the well screen is lowered into the construction casing. And then gravel is packed around the screen and casing and is typically disinfected with calcium hypochlorite. So as the gravel is being packed in here, since it's difficult to disinfect this gravel packing, uh, granular calcium hypochlorite is added in with the gravel pack as a means of disinfecting the gravel pack. Then the construction casing is raised to allow inflow. And then it'll be, uh, the well itself will be disinfected. Now, something to keep in mind uh, when you're taking your test and you come across a question wanting to know the final step of well construction, the final step of well construction is actually a capacity check or where you check the specific capacity. And keep in mind that if the well was drilled into a confined aquifer where you have an upper and a lower confining bed, that capacity check is going to take place over a 24-hour period. But if it's drilled in an unconfined aquifer, that's going to take 72 hours for the capacity check. So keep in mind, 24 hours for a confined aquifer, 72 hours for an unconfined aquifer.